and welcome back to the Super Duty Build Series. My name is Adam Andrews and you are in the AeroWorks Workshop. And today it's a special day because today is episode number 50. That's right, we've shot 50 episodes since we started this project at the end of 2020. Actually, August 29th, 2020, I believe was our first episode. Today we've got a cool uh, project going on. We've been talking about this header tank for a while. We were waiting on some fittings to come in. I've got those fittings here. Uh, and if you may or may not know, uh, we're installing, of course, the Viking engine. This is the Viking header tank that they supply uh, when you buy the complete engine package. And uh, what it consists of is basically a custom aluminum tank. It's a two and a half gallon tank. On the bottom, we have built-in fuel pumps, filters, uh, drain valve, the whole deal is built in the bottom. And on the top, they provide uh, barbed fittings to use standard rubber fuel hose. We are switching that out. Uh, we're gonna go with some AN fittings, which we have here. And we had to get a kind of a, a unique size because of the small NPT size and then the size of the fuel lines that we're using. But basically, we're gonna convert these over to AN fittings and we're going to do the NPT to the flare fitting. And then on top of our fuel filter, or excuse me, our fuel tank, what we will end up with essentially is a NPT fitting to flare. I'm just gonna hand thread that in right now, just to give you a little start here. And these have had some uh, thread sealant in them already, so we're gonna clean those up, there we go. Then we're gonna put a quick, it's not really a quick, but it's a coupler. So we're gonna have a flared coupler on there followed by a Holly fuel filter, and I'll put the part number down in the uh, description below as well as the specs on this. Uh, this is a, uh, a high-end fuel filter. Uh, it'll do up to like 150 gallons a minute, so we're not restricting anything there. We're gonna have two flare fittings installed on both sides. On the inlet side, we have the quick release or the, uh, the, the bushing, you know, whatever you wanna call that. It allows you to, it gives you another spot to untwist this without taking off the main one, basically. And then our fuel lines will come directly into here. So what we'll have on the top of the header tank is two feed lines going through filters, two vent lines going directly into the tank. And then the rest of this will go out and we'll go up to our pass-throughs, which are gonna be up on the side of the cabin. And that's what we're gonna show you here in more detail. Uh, the valves, the fittings, the angles, the hoses, and all that. But first we gotta get these fittings installed and uh, get this tank prepped so that we can get it in the plane and then start getting this stuff locked down. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so to get started, we're gonna take, we've got our four AN fittings here. We've got a, a 5 8 wrench, a 3 quarter inch wrench, and I've got a crescent wrench here. We're gonna be using our Loctite 567 thread locker. And again, we're only talking about putting the thread locker on the NPT side. So we only wanna put that on the pipe side here. So we're gonna put a nice bead of that around. It's really only going in about the first three to four threads of the, uh, the fitting here because you're gonna see very quickly that once this, these start to go in, it's already starting to uh, squish out of the, the actual fitting itself there. Again, this is, you know, aluminum on aluminum, so it doesn't take a lot of turns. We don't need to crank it way down. A good snug fit, and this sealant will do the rest. And that is good. So basically, we're going to do that four times, being careful not to get any or a thread locker on the inside of the tubing itself. Again, these four ports on the bottom are all the same. It doesn't really matter which one goes into which. Uh, we will, however, uh, orientate the tank in the, the correct direction on the bottom because the fuel pumps do point forward and we wanna make sure that we pick the right top two for our filters. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter which one's which, but just for ease of access, we're gonna make sure we point them the right direction. Again, 
Yeah, and you can kind of fill these bottom out and they get snugged up. That sealant will do the rest there. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we'll cut back right after we get the last two in there. Last one going in there. Good and snugged up. So we wanna take a look at the bottom here and we can see that the fuel pumps and the quick release, these are the feed lines essentially going to the, the fuel manifold, will be facing forward or going towards the front of the cabin. So we wanna take that into consideration knowing that the tank is gonna be mounted facing this way and now we have these four ports which could be two vents and two feed lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my fuel filters closer towards the back where my access door is on the side so that if I wanna access those. So I, my plan is to have the fuel filters on the back two AN fittings and then the vent lines will be on the two front fittings. So this is essentially how the tank will be prepped to go into the fuselage. You can see we've got the two fuel uh, filters flow going into the tank with the quick release bushings. Uh, these fittings, of course, I'll put in with uh, the thread locker. And then our fuel lines that we have from uh, AS flight lines, the feed lines will come in from here and the vent lines will come in from here. Pretty straightforward. The only thing we have left is we'll, we'll add an extension onto this and bring that down. This is our fuel gauge, our fuel transducer, so we'll extend that because we're going to land that on a terminal block and then we'll have a set of wires going from the terminal block to the cockpit. And then on the bottom of the tank, of course, we'll have the factory uh, rubber hose because we're going to use these automotive connections. So we're going to have two short hoses going into that fuel manifold block as well as the, the bleed line and the drain line and all that. And same thing here, we'll extend those fuel pump lines, add some wire to that, and those will also terminate on that block and then all of our cables will move forward. So that's what we're working on now. We'll go ahead and get the thread locker on these two fittings, the AN fittings going in and out of the fuel uh, filters. And then we can lock this down and then get this tank mounted inside the cabin. All right, so just like we did on the, uh, the header tank itself, we're gonna put uh, Loctite on the threads here. Like I said, it's only that like first three to four sets of threads because as soon as you start going into the fitting here, it's already coating the threads and squishing out, so you don't need to go overkill on it. Get that in there snugged up, and then we will get her tightened down here. And there she is. There's one. I'm going to do the last one here. And then our fuel filters will be prepped. These are uh, reusable, cleanable fuel filters. They should last, you know, probably something you maybe check on your annual, but they'd even go longer than that, I'm sure. And I'll put all the specs down below in the uh, description area. You can see that just start to squish out there as we go in. So we're getting plenty in there. It's coating all the threads nice. Should have no problem sealing that up. Like I was saying, the biggest thing with the flare fittings, you want to make sure you don't dent, ding, scratch the flare because that's what creates your, your seal on the flare side. So um, now there's some been debates about whether or not you use thread seal. Uh, you really shouldn't use any thread seal on the flare side of things, only the NPT side. Now you can uh, do there are some Teflon coatings and things like that. Um, but primarily, you want to allow the flare to do the seal. Well, guys, we've got the tank prepped. We've got the nipples in. We've got our uh, bushings on here. All that's really left to do is install the header tank inside the fuselage. And then we will install the uh, fuel filters on top. We're going to leave those off for now just so they're not in the way. Um, again, we'll probably extend these wires ahead of time before we put those in as well extend them, shrink tube them, get them all ready to go so that all we're really left to do is just clamping this tank inside the, uh, the fuselage. I did want to give you a little quick tour. We did a big shop cleanup, uh, making more room, getting the wing back out, building a wing table. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we did yesterday here in the AeroWorks workshop. All right, guys. Well, after much shop cleaning, it's time to enter Area 51. So, 
Got the wing table put back together using the speed horses. Put a nice new three quarter inch hardwood top on there. Got it all painted up. Uh, so now we can uh, get our wing back out and get it on that bench. We'll let that paint dry up tonight. And uh, we'll be back in wing operation business. Cleaning up the back bench a little bit. I still got to organize some tools back there. Got the uh, bandsaw, the grinder, drill press, and some hand tools and stuff. Over here we've got uh, rudder, of course, which we got to still trim down according to the template. Got the arrow creeper there, compressor, welder, time clock, to-do list, and of course we have the uh, star of the hour, the Super Duty. So, on the gear, engine mounted, doors hung, time to start working on getting the Horizontal mounted up permanently. We've got our, uh, a lot of our components, drill bits, rivets, and stuff. Clico's over here. So, little shop tour. We're going to be cranking out and starting to work on that wing, like I said. Get that on the table there. Got all of our other components shelved up over here. Got our main working toolbox here. Here's that first wing. We're going to get this back on the bench. And then everything else basically in this crate is wing related. So it's either flaperons, skins, uh, things like that, struts. That'll all be uh, getting in the works here. So the plan is to get the wings back out again. And uh, I believe I have the, it's the right wing that we started. So we'll get the right wing on the table there in the morning when the paint dries. And we'll pick up where we left off with that. And at the same time, we'll be also obviously working on the fuselage and engine installation. So that's where we're at. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Uh, we probably will see about the Saturday Night Live. We're waiting on some equipment to come in. We're supposed to be in today. Uh, didn't make it today. It's going to be in tomorrow. But uh, that's going to enhance some of our live broadcast stuff that we're planning on doing here. So <sighs> welcome to the hell hole. Especially when you're a big guy. So, we are in the hell hole. We have our trusty header tank here. And we've got some clamps. But first we've got to get these clamps opened up. Because they are already installed behind the channel. Which means we've got to get these clamps opened up to their maximum here and try and get this tank installed inside of there. So we're gonna set our parts over here. Got one clamp opened up. Maybe a little shaky in here because I'm, of course, moving the whole plane around. on this one just to hold it in place for a sec all right tank is somewhat in place. Of course, we're going to make some up and down adjustments. We're going to have to uh, get our brace on here as well, but she is in place and we can at least start to kind of lay out these first hoses down here, bring me a little bit closer in here. So again, clamps on. We're going to have to, uh, down in here, you can see we've got, I got one of the quick releases off, but we're going to have our two feed lines coming out of here and they'll immediately be going into a uh, fuel manifold block which will probably mount somewhere back here just depending on the layout. Um, we want to make sure we clear everything and don't interfere with the flap motor or anything like that. But uh, that's what we got working on right now. 
All right, so the kind of the heart of the fuel system, if you will, is of course the header tank. And then the header tank feeds this fuel manifold block here. So this block is essentially a, uh, a pass through. It's a, it's a five port, one, two, three, four, five pass through. They're all interconnected. It really doesn't matter which port you use. However, we are going to use some special fittings here to set up this block the way that we need to. And the way that we want to configure this block is that essentially we're going to have two fuel inputs and what these devices here that I'm just hand screwing in, these are check valves. So what these do is eliminate one fuel line feeding in here, a fuel pump feeding in and forcing it right back out and into the tank. So this is a one way check valve. Fuel can only come into this block, okay? The back side is a female connection and it will have, of course, thread lock and we'll have this screwed in here like this. And this will allow us to take the two fuel pumps and feed those into the block. Now what's left over? Okay, so we've got one, two, three outputs, if you will. So here's what we're gonna use those for. So one obviously is gonna be the feed to the engine. So it really doesn't matter which one it is but we're going to have an output line. So we've got our two in, we've got our one out, okay? We also need a place to put our um, fuel pressure sensor, which is in our case a Dynon sensor. So we're gonna have a Dynon sensor tapped into here. That'll give us our fuel pressure. And then our last one, we have a return line essentially for the high pressure side up on the engine. Um, and Jan's explained this in several videos, but basically when you shut down the engine, there's a certain amount of pressure left in the high pressure side. And if you don't have a place for that to go, you could potentially have a leak in a, in a line in the future. So what this does, there's a small orifice here. I believe this is a 10 thousands orifice. This will screw in here and we will have a fitting screwed into here. And what that basically does is we will tap off of this and run it back to the bottom of the header tank and any pressure in the lines in the fuel system after an engine shutdown will be bled back through this small 10 thousands orifice and through, the, through this fuel system. So this is the output to the engine right here. We'll come in, we'll go back out the block and drain back into the tank so we don't have any leaks anywhere. So this is kind of the configuration that we're gonna set up. They do give you some elbows and a, and a plug here. Um, again, the last port is for our pressure sensor from Dynon. And they also give you some mounting holes. So this could be mounted on the sidewall. It could be mounted flat. I've seen it with standoffs on it like this. Really, however you need to affix it in the aircraft to get your lines to line up, whether it be horizontal, vertical, sideways, you know, wh whatever you need to do, they give you lots of options. And uh, basically all we really need to do is get all these fittings installed uh, with our uh, Loctite 567, and then uh, we'll be ready to kind of figure out where we want to put that. And the, the next step after that will be basically cutting hoses to length from the input side, the output side of the, uh, header tank to the input side, we'll get those cut and clamped, and then the return line back to the bottom of the tank, and then our main fuel line up to the engine. So getting a lot closer to uh, getting this fuel system sorted out. I did want to just show you a close up of what that um, Dynon fuel pressure sensor looks like, so you can kind of get an idea how that will look in there. So again, depending on how you have this mounted, um, you're gonna have fuel lines coming in, Fuel line going out, bleed back to the header tank and fuel pressure sensor right here made by Dynon. Um, and that'll all be uh, thread locked up and we'll be ready to go. All right, so what I came up with after uh, being in the belly there of the aircraft down by the uh, header tank was I fabbed up this bracket here to mount vertically. I then mounted the fuel manifold to the side of that with some AN hardware. 
Got all my ports going the right direction, minus the uh, fuel pressure. It's going to be facing forward. Then I also threw a terminal strip on there because we're going to have uh, two, a pair for the fuel transducer, a pair for the fuel pump, and a pair for the second fuel pump. Um, so that'll handle all the fuel pump header related stuff. And then we'll have wires for the flaps and that moving forward. But we'll go ahead and jump up inside of there and we'll get this mounted up and I'll show you kind of where that's going. And then we'll work on getting these hoses connected. All right, well, here we are back inside of the bay here. We'll just call it the bay, the baggage bay, the belly of the beast. But you can see right here, what I've done is I've essentially fabbed up a bracket here uh, doesn't need to be super strong. It's only really holding this bracket in place. We also have a terminal strip here that will allow me to land my wires for both fuel pumps as well as for the transducer. Uh, all three pairs will lay on this side and then we can run our wires up forward on this side. Uh, we have our fuel in one and two, our fuel overflow or high pressure back flow here our feed which is here which will duck down and go right through here and then we'll have our fuel sensor mounted right there and uh, then we can take the wires from there forward for that so that's what we've got here um, I think it turned out pretty well nothing too fancy pretty easy to fab up and uh, it clears everything and we should be good to go so I'm gonna make some slight tweaks here on the tank and rotate this a little bit we'll start getting some hoses cut get these connected and we'll go from there all right well we'll take a look at what we got here so we've got our fuel manifold unit mounted up we've got our uh, terminal strip mounted up we've got our uh, fuel pump one fuel pump two fuel transducer landed all the wires are neat and tidied up I've got a little bit extra here. We'll figure out what to do with that once I finish the tank. Uh, got our Oetker clamps crimped. Got our two uh, fuel pumps. We've got our, our feedback or our overflow pressure feedback in. I still need to put on the uh, drain valve right there, but other than that, um, the tank is in and ready to go. Moving forward from here, we're still working on that fuel system, and in fact, we even had a small change tonight. I'm going to be uh, adding the Viking uh, two-way valve up here on the uh, over arch up there, if you will. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a part two, basically. But uh, that's going to allow us to balance out the fuel lo uh, load in each wing. So we can, uh, rather than both of them gravity feeding into the header tank, we'll be able to switch left or right. Um, and that's just, you know, constant improvements in the Viking system, um, you know, balancing out the flight, whether it be for fuel load or for just weight and balance or, you know, a, a plane that's flying left or right because you got more fuel in one wing, we can adjust that now. So moving forward from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, add the fuel pressure sensor, which goes right here. That's the Dynon sensor. We'll get that wired up. That'll go forward with the wires. And then this is basically the feed to the engine. Now we've got a couple things to do here. One, um, you know, we could put a hole right here and just basically run a hose down and start working our way forward. But we've also got the high pressure fuel filter to go in. We've got a, uh, uh, a fuel uh, flow cube to install. So those two items have to be between here and the firewall essentially. So we'll be working on routing that out, finding the best spot for that. And then we're gonna jump back up to, uh, once we get this new valve in, putting in the valve uh, on the archway there, and then we're probably gonna have to change a couple lines to uh, a little bit shorter, but what we'll have is basically from the bulkhead fitting up there, we'll have a straight through, right directly to the valve on each side, left and right, and then we'll have a third line feeding back and into the header tank so now only one line coming into here so we're gonna i'm gonna talk to jan about that tomorrow we'll still have the two vent lines coming in but we'll have one feed line one fill fuel filter coming in pre-filter and then we'll have the ability to switch left or right up on the archway there so that's where we're at right now guys uh hopefully uh, this gives you some ideas of what you might be able to do 
with your header tank and um, you know wiring and things like that and uh, for now we're gonna call it good on uh, the header tank we still do a need to put in the bracket um, Viking does provide you with a bracket here to basically uh, take one of these holes in the bottom here and support this kind of on a third angle um, you know you, you kind of come up with where you need to put it we'll figure that out um, I didn't want to put more stuff in the way right now because I'm still crawling back here and I've got a few things to adjust one of those is this flat motor here the uh, bracket from Zenith is a little tall I've got to round that off because it's rubbing on the back of the motor there um, so just some small adjustments back here I also need to put nut plates on this bottom panel and I don't need more things stuck in the way so Anyways, let's hop out of the, uh, the hole here and we'll wrap it up. All right, guys. Well, I think this is a great place to wrap up this fuel system video. There's going to be a part two to the video because we're going to talk about the whole front end part of things. Uh, we had some discussions with Viking this evening, which is great. We're going to be installing one of their new two-way valve systems, which will allow us to balance the fuel in the wings. But that means we've got to make a couple changes to the fuel lines. We've got to shorten a couple things up. Nothing major. Again, it's constantly improving, constantly innovating, constantly coming up with the latest, greatest so that you can build a Super Duty and have the latest, greatest technology in there. Uh, the video is getting a little long for tonight. I don't want any of you guys to fall asleep, so we're going to end it here for today. You got to make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to get these videos and get the alerts that we're going live or we're putting out a new video. Uh, I really appreciate the support. Hope you guys are enjoying the Super Duty build. If you're uh, building a Super Duty or if you're building a Viking uh, a powered aircraft or a Zenith aircraft, hope you're getting some value out of the videos. Uh, I do try and answer all the comments. Leave a comment down below. Good, bad, and different. Doesn't really matter to me. I'll try and answer all of them. Until next time, it's Adam and the AeroWorks Workshop, and we'll see you on the next video.